Welcome to the show. My guest today is Jason Schick, the general manager for U.S. public sector at Confluent. Jason, thanks so much for taking the time. Great to be here. Let me set just a little bit of context for our discussion today. Data is the connective tissue across all agency mission areas. No matter if you're serving citizens at the Social Security Administration or the IRS or defending the Homeland the Defense Department or the Homeland Security Department, data is driving those decisions. The challenge, of course, is data is always moving. It's always changing. To help rein in this data monster, if you will, agencies have been using concepts outlined in the federal data strategy. The 2021 action plan released last fall outlines 11 goals for agencies to meet as part of setting their long-term foundation for using data in new and better ways. The strategy emphasizes the need for enterprise-wide data standards and coordination of data, as well as using data to inform annual budget and planning. The administration expects agencies to start addressing those enterprise goals beginning in 2023, so next year. OMB also expects agencies to optimize self-service data analytics capabilities starting by 2026 and by 2029. It seems far away, but it's really not in many ways. The strategy expects agencies to reach the final stage where they're making proactive evidence-based decisions on automating data improvements. While the strategy obviously lays out a lot of long-term plans to accelerate the value of data, there are things that agencies can do today to really take advantage of their information. For how they can do that, well, that's where my guest comes in. Once again, I'm joined by Jason Schick, the General Manager for U.S. Public Sector at Confluent. I, I let us off with the data strategy piece, and, and there's a lot of focus on it. How is Confluent looking at the data strategy? How is that kind of influencing where you're going, how you serve your, your customers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for that intro. You definitely did your homework, Jason. Um, so, first thing about Confluent, I think, is just a useful level set. So, some listeners might be familiar with Confluent. Um, based on the way we're used in industry or different government use cases. Um, Confluent is based on a secure enterprise packaging of Apache Kafka. Um, and it's used in a lot of, of projects that are focused on things like digital services, cyber modernization, harnessing sensor data to build data rich experiences and applications. So we're, we're a data movement platform and what that really means in practical terms is we're all about taking data from wherever it lives today, whether it's on-prem or up in a cloud, and moving it to wherever it's needed, um, as it's needed, when it's needed. So if you, if you read into the federal data strategy, there's 10 core principles, and we're, we're really highly focused on four of them, which are grouped under the heading conscious design. Um, we, we do some really important things to make it so that Government organizations can demonstrate responsiveness, ensure relevance, harness existing data, and anticipate future use cases. So those are four of the principles that are called out in the federal data strategy. And we've got a lot to say on that. I'm looking forward to, to going back and forth with you. The data movement and take it where it is, take, send it where it needs to be, and make sure it's avail available. We hear a lot of the edge, right? T data to the edge. You got to get you know, cloud to the edge, data to the edge, everything's at the edge now. Is, is that where kind of the, the focus has been for a lot of agencies? When you talk to your customers, are they, okay, that's great, we have everything in our data center or in some cloud, but hey, our people who are inspecting me or our people who are at the border, that they really need the data. Is that, is that the conversations you're having? Uh, that's, that's one major topic of conversation. Um, data's, data's tricky. Data's, uh, getting, getting your arms around the data problem is a truly enterprise, a truly whole of government um, exercise. And, and that's really what makes it hard. Um, one cool thing about talking about data at the edge is when people think about the edge, they think about mobile use cases. They even think about disconnected use cases. And that starts to pretty naturally lead you into thinking about how things are changing. And for Confluent, and this is where I think things are really exciting for Confluent and what we're doing, we've taken a different way of imagining what data really is. So for a lot of us, we grew up in the IT space viewing data as a static thing. And we've built a, a series, vast enterprises of collection tanks, usually relational databases, where data is stored until somebody or some system comes looking for it. And while that works fine in a lot of use cases, if the objective is to take the best possible action in the moment based on complete up-to-date information, then we can probably do better. So talking about mobile edge, um, out there in the edge particularly, but anywhere in the real world, things are constantly changing. And data is just that digital representation of what's happening in the real world. So what we'd really want to do is, you know, as the real world is changing, we want the data to change. We want the data to move 
to the people in the systems that are responsible for taking action. So what Confluent has done is we've reimagined data from being a passive asset to an active asset, putting it in motion where the event, where the thing that happens, whether it's at the edge or whether, it, whether it's in a call center, the event is the catalyst for taking a really specific targeted action. Let's dig into that a little bit because I think that's important because again, we hear a lot about, oh, I got to get data here, data there. Actually, it doesn't matter. It's got to go to the right person at the right time or right people uh, at the right time and the right situation. And, and how, how, do, how does that happen? Because again, there's so much of it, it's constantly changing. And the data that we have right now has changed now, has changed mm -hmm. now, has changed right. now. Yep. So maybe walk me through a little bit how that process works, not just for Confluent, but, but more generally for, for uh, when you talk to agency customers. Sure, yeah, so uh, we're generating more and more data than we ever have, right? So I think part of what you're getting at is just the, the overload. So the trick is uh, you don't want to push everything to somebody or some system. It, it needs to be set so that uh, the user, the app, the system, whatever you want to say, is subscribing to the things that they care about. And so the data is in motion. It doesn't mean that that target environment, that target person is, is going to be fed a fire hose of, of all the data that might possibly be out there. So um, you know, rather than a, a, the conventional pull model, it, the data flows proactively, but that doesn't mean the system has to take it all. I love that the data flows proactively, but it's it's what you care about. So obviously, if just the examples I've used in my intro, if you talk about Social Security or IRS or whomever, if they're serving citizens, they they're going to say we want this box of data. That's but right. if you're DoD or Homeland Security or CBP or whomever, they want a, a different box of data, and that's and that's where you all and, and other partners in the industry can help them kind of define that and then, okay, is this the right data? No, okay, what would be the right data? Kind of go through that iterative process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. So the, the trick is to be able to subscribe to what you care about. And like anything, it requires planning and thought, <laughs> but uh, it allows to have a highly personalized experience for the citizen, um, the claimant, the call center operator, whoever it might be. It could be a, you know, somebody um, in the mission space out at the tactical edge. Um, the data itself is going to be a really good guide for what they care about. And, and I think the other piece of it is, is that understanding of the business process side. Well, what, what are you trying to achieve in that business process? Yes, you could have all the data in the world, but if you get too much, it's useless. And if you get too little, you're, you're going to feel like you're not active. Is that another conversation you have is that end result? What are you trying to achieve? How often does that come up? Well, it, it comes up all the time. Well, um, hope so, so right? <laughs> Yeah, the, so there's a, there's a sort of um, a cultural element to this, right? So the, the federal data strategy is, has 10 core principles, and the ones that I just highlighted a minute ago are, are more technical in nature, and that's a, a natural place for us to start. But a lot of the rest of them are cultural. And um, there's some important things about the way we approach that space uh, that make it easy to experiment. And so, you know, in in you know prior eras, one of the biggest obstacles was to do anything interesting with technology. You had to write a big check up front, and you had you had to really hope that you did your homework right. And you know sometimes that works, but but you're taking a gamble. What what you can do with Confluent or any open core software like we are, uh, like I said, we're we're built on top of Apache Kafka. That means you can experiment. If you're a project manager, if you're a user, you can experiment with some ideas. And so you can start with your thesis, like this is the data that I need to serve you know, my border patrol agents, for instance. Um, but you might not have that right, and that's okay because you haven't really risked a whole lot of money up front. You haven't risked your reputation. What you've, you can start to use some open source software to get started and learn some things. The way... Um, this data in motion platform is designed, data is discoverable, and once the data source is published, anybody that's got the right credentialing can access it. So in that scenario I'm talking about, somebody can start to try their ideas out with data that, that they subscribe to from somewhere else, and they don't have to negotiate service level agreements 
and they don't have to build deep point-to-point -point integrations with those source systems. They can just subscribe. So the, the cost and friction of acquiring data goes way down, and the upfront investment in the software to try out their ideas goes way down. And so culturally, that makes it a lot, a lot easier to take some risks, to try some ideas. If you're a, a program manager, or if you're the person responsible for budget, you can green light some of these ideas because it's not as big of a gamble. So um, the business models of companies like Confluent actually really help make it more possible to try ideas and iterate. And, and when you do that, you know, then you see some amazing things start to happen over time that, that you can't even predict. And I think that's also a way to, to change that culture you mentioned. We always hear IT is about culture change. People have to see those small wins. And, oh, my job is a little easier now because of that data, or my job is a little easier because the business process that, that leans on that data that I've collected, or vice versa. Well, that didn't help, but I only spent two weeks on it, and now I'm going to move to the next thing. You hear that, I think, all a the lot. time. A lot, or eh, some of that looked all right. <laughs> some of that, let's never do that again. Never but <laughs> but, but it, it, you learn. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really what this is about because if, 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 again, because of the way data flows and the way because it changes all the time, it's a constant state of learning. And, and it actually brings us around to a great piece because when we talk about data and, and, and really the flow is proactive and making sure that you're getting the right people at the right time, I'm not on an island, you're not on an island, we need to work together. And, and, and again, when I, you know, IRS needs to work with SSA, who needs to work with GSA, who needs to work with, so on and so forth. Is that interagency, shared services, shared data services, is that something else you're starting to see grow? We are, yeah. Um, and you know, obviously that's existed for a long time. And, and it's necessary because of the way government works. Different agencies need to do validations and checks with one another in order to go and, and do what they do. Um, but it's always been hard because when you integrate systems across departments or across agencies, uh, you, there's a lot of negotiation. There's the, you know, it costs money from both sides. And if you have these deep integrations, then if you try to change something in department A, department B either has to come with you or they block you. Yeah. And so you know, you, what you really want, and this is something that's, that's core to the way Confluent is built, you want to decouple your your data producers and your data consumers. And so by doing that, um, those, you know, multiple agencies can share data um, freely. The, the cost of that, that initial integration is a lot less, but most importantly, they don't impose restraints on one another. So they can continue to evolve as they would want to, and they can continue to add other subscribers to this data service that they create without um, creating this brittle inter interdependency between lots of different systems. So it's really important, and we're seeing customers start to recognize that that's the case. Um, and um, you know, we're really excited about some of the examples. It's a little too early to talk publicly about some of what we're seeing. I wish I could. You knew I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You knew yeah. I would. I, and, and I'd love to tell you. <laughs> Maybe next time you have to come on again. That's yeah. Let's make a point of that. You, you bring up the brittleness of it, and you bring up all, all the the pieces and parts. And I always think about uh, as someone who likes to read the Federal Register. Maybe not every day anymore, but but quite often. I know it's a, a snooze fest, but there's always something called the computer matching program that basically requires Agency X to get permission from Agency Y to to share data. Mm -hmm. And it's always like, why why do they have to do that? And then it was explained to me years ago about the why. So so if you can make it. Easier, again, you go back to what you did, said, decouple a data producer from the data consumer. That kind of resolves some of those concerns. Yeah, yeah, it, a thing that I can't resist interjecting there. You know, like people talk a lot about how you know, somebody that owns the source system doesn't want to share their data. Um, and you know, sometimes people say, well, that's because data is power and they want to preserve their power. And you know, that could be true in some cases. But there's other like, real constraints there. They have a team. And if they're going to loan their team out to talking to external organizations all day long about things like schemas and, and data formatting and all kinds of things that th that other organization needs to know to access their data, either they're going to burn their team out, they won't be able to satisfy their own mission objectives, or or they're going to blow through their budget. And so there are there have historically been good reasons to be careful about how you share data because it, it's expensive. Well, there's ways to make it cheaper, and we're going to talk about that in the next segment. We'd love to help. Let's, let's take a quick break. You're listening to the discussion Innovation in Government, sponsored by Kerasoft on Federal News Network. <laughs> 